Welcome to Church Everywhere. I'm Nathan. And I'm Becky, one of Northland's interns. And I'm so excited to be here today. Well, we're excited for you to be here too. We love our interns. And remember, all of this hard work you're putting in, it's gonna pay off one day. I've been feeling the love from everyone here at Northland since I've arrived. What do you mean about the work paying off though? Well, when you show up and work hard, people take notice. In fact, just today, I got this gift as a thank you for all of my hard work here at Northland. That's awesome, good job. Yeah, thank you. You know, I got a thank you gift for my time here this week too. Oh, that's cool, what did you get? Oh. What's cool. wrong? Uh, my lollipop doesn't look quite as good as it did just a minute ago. Hmm, yeah, I get that. You know, this reminds me of a scene from this movie, A Family Man. Nicolas Cage wakes up one day and he's in a completely different life. Yeah, I, I've seen that, right. So he was this high-powered finance guy. He's single and he goes to sleep and he wakes up with a totally different life and he's married and he has kids. And then he spends the movie trying to work his way back to his old life. In this scene, he's finally landed a job from his old career and he's revealing all the changes he's planned to his wife. And, well, check out this clip from A Family Man. It's pretty incredible, isn't it? It's like a museum. Uh-huh. Look around. So what's the big surprise? You didn't rent this for the weekend, did you? Think bigger. For the week? This place is a perk, Kate. A perk? Mm-hmm. For what? A company called P.K. Lassiter Investment House uses it to attract new executives. I'm going into arbitrage, honey. It turns out I have a knack for it. Jack, what are you talking about? I'll be making twice what I make now, plus a hefty bonus, and that's just a start. And we can live in this apartment practically rent-free until we find a place of our own. Are you out of your mind? I don't think so. This is going to be a better life for all of us. We could put Annie and Josh into private schools. Annie goes to a great school, Jack. I'm talking about the best schools in the country here, Kate. Jack, what could you possibly be thinking about? What about my, what about my job? Well, I mean, this is New York City. It's like the needy people capital of the world. Your Jersey clients aren't a tenth as pathetic as the ones you could find here. <laughs> I, I, I can't even believe you're talking about moving back into the city, Jack. I thought the reason that we left was because we didn't want to raise the kids here. No. No, this is the center of the universe. If I were living in Roman times, I would live in Rome. Where else? And today, America is the Roman Empire. New York is Rome itself. John Lennon. Jack. Listen, okay, okay, you know something? I'm detecting, like, a funky tension here, and this was supposed to be a happy day. So guess what? I don't need this. We don't have to live here. Forget it. I'll, I'll commute. I'll drive to work. <gasps> in traffic, Jack, it's over an hour each way. That's like three hours every day. When are you ever going to see the kids? Kate, you're not understanding me. I'm talking about a perfect life, a great life. Everything we pictured when we were young, the whole package. You said so yourself. Life has thrown us a few surprises, so we made sacrifices. Well, guess what? Now I can finally get us back on track. I can do that, Kate. I want to do that. I, I need to do that as a man for all of us. Please just think about this for one second. No more lousy restaurants. No more clipping coupons. No more shoveling snow. Then get a snowblower, Jack. Don't go get a new career without even telling me about it. And don't, don't take Annie out of a school that she loves and don't move us out of a house we've become a family in. You're, you're... Don't you see, I'm talking about us finally having a life that other people envy. Oh, Jack. They already do envy us. What a fascinating exchange at the end of that clip. 
where he says, I'm talking about us finally having a life that other people envy. And she says, they already do envy us. You know, when you get right down to it, envy is never about what you have. Envy is really about what you're missing. And I think it's telling that when Jesus came, he didn't lavish us with the things that the world tells us that we should envy. And envy is such a deception because it tells us we'll finally be happy if we have the stuff that's in someone else's life. So then we run around trying to earn stuff that doesn't actually matter. And we never find contentment in those things because it seems like someone else always has more. But isn't God amazing? He saw all this happening and he knew we needed to be rescued. He knew we needed divine intervention so that we could be freed from envy and jealousy because those lead to destruction. It's no coincidence either that God's grace would be the very thing that releases us from envy. Because as long as we think of the things in our lives as things we've earned, of course we're gonna slide into the habit of measuring ourselves against everyone else around us. And the irony to envy is that you have to ignore God when you're living a life of envy because no one can measure up to him. So, if we're freed from a life fueled by envy, what are we freed to? We are free to live a life of love, fueled by the grace of God. That means we can experience love and peace and joy. In fact, we can experience all sorts of amazing things in life when we're free from envy. And we can share those things too, instead of being people who just have to envy to share. We can freely give ourselves away without worrying someone else will become greater because we know it's God's grace that sustains us. Think about this, we, we're the church everywhere. And that means that in the midst of a world full of envy, a world of taking, that instead we can be the people content with God's provisions for us and we can be the people of giving. And what a difference that can make. We saw the difference Jesus made to people when he looked at how he could give himself a way to meet their needs. That's how he saved each of us. So go be the church everywhere. Live that life of love. Give yourself away, just like Jesus did for each of us. Remember, you're not just watching online. You're the everywhere church, and you're not in this alone. If you need help with finding freedom from a life of envy or in how to give yourself away, email us. Connect with us if you need support, and we'll see you again soon for another episode.